I'm not meaning that that's bad at all. Finnish people that are watching this video, please don't get angry. So then, it, it feel, even though you are not lying, it feels like you are lying on the phone saying that I would go to work and start shaking everyone's hands and kissing every girl's cheek. Hola, привет, como esta, namskar, hi, moi, I just woke up, that's why my hair is in uh, morning, morning mode, is, as you can see. So I wanted to talk about something today, eight basic things that has changed in me since I have been living in Finland. Numero uksi, number one. I have learned in Finland not to be a gentleman with girls. Als je de mooiste opvullen. Maar je liet ons wel schrikken. Sorry. When you are raised in Latin America, since you are a kid, your parents teach you that if you are with someone or if you're going out with a girl, or if, there, if there is a girl, you, you are supposed to be a gentleman. You know, hold the doors open, you might pay for the food, do these things, you know, uh, don't walk ahead of them, wait for them, walk next to them. If they are carrying something heavy, offer to carry that for them. That is normal, that is mm, to be a gentleman. An advice for Finns, if you are dating a Latin American girl and you don't help her with the bags or with anything, and you are dead. They are never going to date you. Smell it then. All right. It's <laughs> gorgeous. It's but beautiful. what do you feel? I feel, um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell me you don't feel anything. <laughs> because they are expecting men to be gentlemen and so on. So, in Finland I have learned not to be a gentleman. And why is that? Because if you are going out with a Finnish girl and you start holding every door open and you offer her to carry her bags and you offer this and that, the girl will think that you are being sleazy that you are just trying to be um trying to do these things to to get her to trick her to make her think that you are just a gentleman and you know show these things so you can uh get her but that's not what's happening if the girl is carrying something heavy and she's sweating let her sweat if she's going to open a door and is heavy let her open the door because girls themselves have said that to me afterwards oh when i first met you and you were doing those things, I thought that you were just, you know, trying to pretend, trying to trick me, trying to get me. But, uh, so I thought you were kind of like, hmm, maybe he's not, hmm, maybe he's weird. But he's not. He was just trying to do what he learned to do. But, so, if you're Latin American and you come to Finland and girls are suffering, let them suffer because that's what they want, apparently. <laughs> I'm kidding. Probably that's not what they want, but you know what I mean. Just let them be. And they're happy like that. Most of the times they're going to say like, no, I don't need help with my bags. No, I don't need help with this. So is that how it goes? That's how it goes. The second thing, you have heard this before. If you have read anything about Finland and that is personal space, especially when using public transport. The first time when I started using public transport in Finland, it was very funny to me to see that if you look inside of a bus, you see that people are always sitting alone on the bus. If they just step inside of the bus and they look around and they see that uh, there are seats near them, but there is a person next to that seat, they will never sit there. They will always go to the back to try to find a road that has no people next to them. And I was used to when you get inside of a bus, no matter if there is someone sitting next to you or it doesn't matter, you just sit next to that person, maybe because the seat is closer to the door and you want to you want to get out faster when you reach your destination so it wasn't a big deal if you are gonna sit and there is someone next to you no one cares no one cares if you are very close to them but in Finland is it's just because the Finns are very polite so first of all when they get inside of the bus they don't want to make anyone uncomfortable by sitting next to them so they try to be be alone and everyone's happy. Now, the funny thing is that 
in 2018, yes, 2018, I traveled to Ukraine because I went to I went to Chernobyl. I wanted to see the nuclear power plant. Be very careful. You are pushing 35. So I got out of the airport, I went to the shuttle bus and I sat down on the first row and I had no one next to me. Then I noticed this huge Ukrainian guy wearing a leather jacket, shaved head. He looked kind of scary. I'm not trying to offend anyone from Ukraine, by the way. It's just the way that guy looked like. A guy like that could be from any country, nationality, or you can find that person in any kind of country. And I'm also not saying that people with shaved heads are... You know what I mean, nowadays you cannot talk without offending thousands of people. So I saw him get inside of the bus, he walked, and then I was wearing my winter coat, long coat, and he sat next to me. He sat next to me and I was, uh, because I have been living in Finland, I got really um, surprised that someone dared to sit next to me. The worst part was that he sat on half of my coat, so I was pulled a little bit to the right side. Uh, finally, we got to the destination and he went out and I was thinking for a moment, oh, wait a minute, that's actually normal. People do sit next to others in buses or trains or... Thing number three, numero colme. In Finland, it's bad seen if you go to work while you feel sick. In Latin America is the opposite. If you are sick and you go to work, people think that, oh, look at him, he is sick, he has a flu or a cold or something, and he's still here, he's working hard. Actually, bosses expect that you go to work even when you are sick. If you call and say, hey, I have a little flu or a cold, I won't go to work today, they will think you are a bad worker. And that's a bad thing, because in Finland is the complete opposite. If you go to work while you have a cold or you are feeling bad, your own co-workers might get a little bit annoyed that, hey, if you are sick, why did you come to work? You are risking that all of us get sick. Go home. This is, this is really funny, but if you are feeling sick, you are feeling sick, right? And you want to call your boss, the second you pick up the phone to call your boss, you start thinking, but I actually, maybe I don't feel that bad. May start doubting yourself that you are sick, you know you are sick, but what if you don't sound sick or what if you actually don't feel that bad and you could still work? So then it, it feel, even though you are not lying, it feels like you are lying on the phone saying that ah, I'm feeling bad. And so... <laughs> Thing number four, numero nelia, being relaxed at work. Now, I don't mean that... I have changed in Finland because now I don't do anything at work. No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is that in Latin America, uh, bosses are like the stereotypical bosses that you see in the movies. They are always behind the workers, you know, uh, did you do this? Did you do that? For example, my friend Damaris in Chile, she always says that at work, her bosses can call her on a Saturday, on a Sunday to ask for something. In Finland, that is unheard of. You will never, ever expect in Finland that they will call you from work on a Saturday or a Sunday. In Finland, they respect the free times of the workers a lot. Bosses are never following the workers around to see if you did this, if you did it fast enough. They let you be. They leave you in peace. They give you a task. You have your tasks and it's your responsibility to complete them. That makes work easier. That makes you more productive. I know from experience that that makes you more productive. You actually want to do the things more if no one is putting pressure on you to do those. Thing number five, numero visi. Missing family. I have changed since I, I have been living in Finland because here, well, it's not just family, it's also friends. In Finland, people tend to be detached from families many times, not always. Some families are very close together, but it's also normal to hear in Finland how brothers, sisters, aunts, grandparents, or any kind of relative, cousins, they are more like very, very, very distant friends. 
In Latin America, families are very close together. You see them almost every weekend or every day. You see your uncle, your aunt. Uh, it's normal. It's, it makes it makes people happy. And now that I'm getting older, I realize that the most important thing in life is family. That's it. So now I have started to miss family more and more. You might have money, you might have whatever, but if you don't have family, you have nothing. So in a way, you will expect me to say that Finland has changed me in the way that now I see cousins and aunts and these kind of things as distant relatives, but it didn't change me that way. It changed me in the opposite way. It made me miss that connection with family even more. Uh, in Latin America, even the person that gets married with your uncle or your aunt becomes automatically your uncle or aunt as well. And you see them as family. And that's normal. You can see them every weekend. It's, it's not a, a weird thing at all. I feel I have to explain this maybe to Finns because I have talked with many Finns and sometimes they don't even know the word for uncle or aunt in Finnish because they are not used to, to hanging with them or using those words or even meeting with them. And I'm not meaning that that's bad at all. Finnish people that are watching this video, please don't get angry. I'm just saying that it's the way it is. It's a fact, especially younger Finns. Reverse culture shock. Thing number six, kusi. Reverse culture shock is something that happens when you move away from your home country, you live in a different country for so long or for so little, depends on each person, that you, when you visit your home country again, or if you move back, you will feel like you are a foreigner. And that has happened to me. When I have left Finland the last times and I have been in a different country, like the thing with the bus, for example, um, you feel how much you have changed that you start missing i start missing finland when i go to another country because of the safety because of the relaxation you feel when you are in finland pretty much you don't have to worry about anything if you're walking on the street you don't have to worry that uh, there is danger here or there there is there is no danger in finland no one is going to try to do something bad at you to you, uh, steal your phone or something, even if you leave things uh, by accident somewhere, you will get them back. Two times this has happened to me in Finland. One time I left my wallet on public transport and that was on a Friday and on a Monday I got a phone call from the person that found it. So um, whenever I have visited another country, I have felt unsafe, even thought the country is safe as well. And the second I land in Helsinki Vanta, I feel I'm at home and I'm safe. Aww. Thing number seven, Seitseman has become cold. What I mean by that, I don't mean that I have become cold, but I have become what in Latin America will be considered as being cold. When greeting friends or co-workers in Finland, I will show you how you do it. You just walk to the office in the morning or you see a friend or something and you just say, moi. That's it, that's all. That's all you have to do. Or you do this, or you do this, or something like that. So it's completely different from Latin America because in Latin America, when you come to the office in the morning and you already know your coworkers for some time or for some little time, it's normal that you, if there is a girl Co-worker, you kiss her on the cheek to say hi, good morning. It can be two kisses, it can be one. And with the guys, your friends, you shake their hands, that's normal. Also with friends outside of work, when you see them, it's pretty normal that, uh, let's say you see your friend and his girlfriend, which is also your friend. When you see them, you shake hands or maybe even hug the guy and the girl, you kiss her on the cheek and that's normal. No one is getting jealous or anything. But if you explain this in Finland and you Finns watching this video, you know it's like that. You might be surprised as well that in Latin America it's like that. 
But if, if in Finland you will see your Finnish friend with his Finnish girlfriend and you will go and shake his hand and then kiss his girlfriend on the cheek, everyone will think that what is happening? What is going on? How can this guy kiss my girlfriend, shake my hand? <laughs> that will be a huge mess. Also at work, if I would go to work and start shaking everyone's hands and kissing every girl's cheek, they will think I'm crazy. But that's how it is. That's how I was raised and that's normal in Latin America. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just funny. And why I say I have changed? Because now I also have to get, I got used to this moi and not shaking hands, no kissing, nothing. I got used to it to the point that when I have met people from Latin America or Spain or France or these kind of countries in Finland, and they are new also, they are not used to these things. They shake hands or the girls expect to be kissed on the cheek. And I haven't done that. I haven't done that because now it's more like, oh, what do I do? Do I kiss? Do I shake hands? Do I, am I just better to stay still and say moi? And that's it. That's, <laughs> you cannot fail with that, right? Number eight, Kazakhstan. Using, using shoes, using shoes inside of a house. Depending on where are you watching this video from, you might have the same customs. Living in Finland is considered very rude if you go inside of a home of someone while wearing your shoes. It's normal and expected that if you live in Finland, you are going to leave your shoes at the door and you're going to go inside only with your socks. That is completely and absolutely normal. And uh, actually, the first time I saw this kind of thing wasn't in Finland, it was in Ukraine. And I thought it was funny that people were walking around on their socks inside of, of, a, of a house. Because in most Latin American countries that I know, you don't do that. You walk around inside with shoes, like they do in the United States or Australia. And uh, the last time I visited my parents, I was walking around the house without shoes, only with socks. And I remember that my mom was looking at me a little bit with raised eyebrows, that thinking that it was funny. I was walking around just with socks. But that's normal in Finland and I get it when you live in a country that has, uh, it could have six months of snow, you are not going to walk all the time inside of the home wearing your shoes full of snow or you will be cleaning 24 seven the floors. So it's completely normal to leave the shoes uh, at the door and use wool socks. Wool socks to keep your feet warm. Get rid of all of the socks you have that have holes or you will be very embarrassed. And that was it. That was the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. And um, if you want to subscribe, so you can see when I post a new video. Moi moi, see you, bye bye.